Hey everyone, this is Calvin Seymour. I'm your host for the Phantasmal Fantasy Art Collectors Chat. Um, come to you a couple times a week and we like to look for fantasy art, um, poke around the internet and see what we can see that's for sale. Um, for those of you that don't know, I've been running a fantasy art uh, collectors group um, on Facebook for a couple of years. Uh, you can find that at uh, facebook.com slash phantasmal art for the page and then if you hit the join button that will take you to the group which is uh, facebook.com slash group slash phantasmal um, so anyway uh, we welcome you to, to join the group subscribe to this channel uh, if you like the video like it it helps us kind of grow uh, the number of people that we're going to be able to have on this channel and we're looking forward to getting a community built so um, that being said let's get started I have a couple things uh, you know we'll do the usual um, Facebook um, look at the gr a couple groups there and go over the, ma uh, the Magic Gathering groups you know MTG Magic Gathering has really been a big catalyst for fantasy art. I feel like uh, it is, you know, it along with like these Frazetta paintings that are selling for millions, uh, and 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 the the prices that artists have been able to get for their original works nowadays has been, really been driven by um, by the collectors that that collect Magic Gathering. So you'll see it tends to come up at a much higher price than usual. I mean, you, you, I'm just if I were to just off the top of my head guess, I think you could get a, you know, uh, a similar work by the same artist that might sell a fifteen thousand dollar magic painting for three to five thousand dollars. That's non magic, and that's that's the power of publishing uh, published works, uh, things that people collect, um, and you know, magic is one of those. So we we will usually cover several things because usually every week there's something that's hit and we'll look at that closely but I also like to really kind of explore out there and see what else is uh you know what 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 other kind of art is out there and you get of course the classic fantasy that you have uh lots of surrealist um you know basically anything that's not to me just depicting normal everyday life um you know we're not going to be covering uh, paintings of deer and, and ducks but you know if they're being chased by a dragon then we might we might consider that so that's the sort of thing that we do here and without much else to say let's go ahead and get going and all right So this is the Phantasmal uh, Facebook page. And like, like you see, it's about 1,500 members. Um, and it's kind of a highlight of the things we're gonna look at today. Of course, we never know where we might really end up uh, when it's all said and done, because I like to hop around a good bit. And I honestly just like to go wherever things take us. Sometimes we'll run into a piece of art and it'll be very intriguing and we'll want to know a little more about the artist maybe. Um, and as, as always you'll notice we also have a, a chat here so if you ever have a question I try to keep my eye out for questions um, and you know if you just want to say hey be sure to uh, throw something in chat and we can talk about anything that we're looking at. Okay, so I posted this the other day. Uh, Curtis Rykovich uh, has uh, actually had put out a Morticia painting. Um, let's see if I can pull that up. Oh, let me see. Just a second. And it, anyway, it, it sold actually. It, I don't think it lasted a, an hour. Yeah, here it is. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it didn't even last an hour or two because the second I clicked on it, it was already sold. 
what I noticed while I was there, um, this is a really cool piece. I noticed while I was there um, that I had had one that hadn't sold. And this is Wednesday Adams, 14 by 18, oil on wood, um, $2,200. Now, I did post this a couple days ago, so it's a chance it sold. So let's take a look at that. No, you can still you can still buy this. So um, if this is your kind of art, and and I do love the gothic elements, I've become more and more open to what I would consider, you know, not my core. And these, this is just another step for me. I I love it all. It's just a matter of you know what you add to your own personal collection, what appeals to you. And in the group, um, let's see what we have. Okay, so we have uh, Stallion of Ashmouth by Chris Ron. Uh, it's 14 by 18 inches. Now, if you don't know Chris, I, I think I've mentioned him almost every week that I've done a show now. Um, but he seems to always have a lot of activity. His pieces go for a lot. I think they regularly go for about $10,000. Um, but this is a well-priced, um, as far as magic art goes, painting by a top artist. Uh, I think he was asking 6500 or best offer. Um, it's quite cool. And you can check out uh, Jason here if you are interested in making an offer. So this piece actually came across while I was uh, putting together my montage for the uh, thumbnail for YouTube. Um, and this is by Lara Dan. Now, uh, Lara does a lot of art I like very very um I don't know it's 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 very moody dark um she always puts these little imprints on her art which I, I don't know many artists that do that I, I've never seen a piece where she didn't do that I don't know if she has any where she doesn't um have to check with her on that uh, she's really nice. I've talked with her a couple of times on Facebook, if you want to call chatting talking, but we've interacted. And I actually uh, purchased a piece from one of her shows not too long ago, which I thought I'd show with you. Uh, but you know what? Let, let's, let, let's first, let's look at this piece, then I'll, I'll bring it back. So we've got White Wolf, 16 by 20 acrylic on wood, and is available in her studio cell. Um... So let's see if it's actually what she's got over here. Um, so $400 cherry love bites. Uh, she did several of these. So they're holding the little candy hearts. Um, each one says something on it. Let's see if I can get a larger picture. It's pretty cool. What is this one? Uh, that picture is a little too small. I want to get a good grip on it. I mean, that one's actually bigger. Purple. I love the colors. And it's sold. Now she has a show coming up, a solo show. I'm not sure which gallery off the top of my head, but she does have a show coming up and it's vampire based, which is definitely up my alley. Uh, which the piece I have is a vampire and as you can see, she does a lot of empiric things. So I, I really attract to her art. It's very, she's the closest thing to me to, to some of the, uh, some of my really core artists that I like, but then that still has that like, um, kind of a different take you know the all the patterns and the 
things that she adds to them. Um, not something that would be in my, my usual fare, but I really like it. Um, I love that piece. That's, that's great. Love the hair choice and the, the blood down the chin. Um, appropriately named Suck It. <laughs> it's sold too. That's a really cool idea. I wonder where she got that. Bite Me. The Boyfriend Vampire. And by fourteen five hundred dollars, so I don't actually see that other piece on here. I bet it's like on her Instagram or something. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I'm sure she'll have it posted soon. Um, if you are interested in it, reach out to her uh, on Facebook. Sure, or you know, through her website, which is laradan.com. And we've been there. Let's go. All right, I really like this piece. I I, I love the uh, the werewolfy pieces where you you have some fur or something, and it's like being worn as a cloak, like you're not actually a werewolf, but you know. You know that person's a werewolf. I mean, you just, you know. They usually also have a nice uh, fur buddy right next to them. Uh, so this piece isn't technically for sale, I don't believe, though I, I'm, this is about Milvaj Saran, um, and it's for a video game. Uh, Primordial's Battle of the Gods, or Battle of Gods. That's really cool. I like uh, the Norse kind of aspects of this. Uh, that shield's really wicked. This looks like a little slightly different style than I'm used to seeing out of Milavage. Maybe like this. You know, this side seems more familiar than this side, so I'm not sure why that is. But maybe it's art direction. Anyway, there is no price. I imagine if you're interested. You would just reach out and talk to him about it. Uh, so I was uh, messing around on eBay and I came across several pieces. Um, and I think uh, a lot of them are cool. Um, some of them are affordable. So let's take a look at those. So we've got Murphy's piece here. He has several that I actually saw online. Now, if I'm not wrong, this is uh, Raven Chief Fancy Flight Games, Lord of the Rings style. I mean, those are his keywords. It seems like this might be one of those uh, three sets. Like, I don't know if you remember the old D&D miniatures where you had the, the fledgling adventurer, the intermediate adventurer, and the advanced adventurer. Well, he had, for a while, he had on his website these little sets like that of paintings where there was there was a guy and then his there was a slightly more powerful guy and then you had the you know the, the king or god mode and I, th this might have been one of those it seems familiar but i don't know if it has a couple buddies out there or not i went ahead and pulled this one too which was really cool um egyptian stuff you know Everyone has their different mythos. I, I like, uh, I love anything Norse, um, any kind of Viking, anything. And I also like Arthurian stuff. But I'd say my third is I just like Egyptian things. They're just innately cool. And I also really like zombie types of things. So this is a great piece. Now... I don't know how large that is. Let's see. 11 by 14. So I'd say that's about typical price for 11 by 14 from a, you know, a, a good artist. So that's actually, I think, probably a good deal. Found a few other things. Now this was almost an instant purchase for me. Uh, 
there there was a big set of these War Duke and uh, you know D and D cartoon bad guys that uh, were rolled out at an auction, I believe, for the um, well, you know one of the D and D collector groups that usually handles those kind of like Jim Rosloff uh, liquidations and and this is I think from the same books that most of the other things were from uh, it seems like it but here you have uh, War Duke who's the chaotic evil fighter uh, kind of an iconic character from early D&D &D. oh look and I believe that you've got the uh, the wizard I'm forgetting his name off the top of my head now uh, I'm going to lose, lose my points but that might be him it looks like his cloak's right the evil wizard, and you have a bunch of lizard men being tangled up by a tree. So, this honestly, I would have bought like immediately just because I really hated missing out. I really hated missing out on those the original offerings that came through, and there were a bunch of them, but I just wasn't in the right um, place and time to, to make the purchase. And so I had to watch them go bye-bye. And I, I bid on a few of them, but there were just too many people bidding them up. But the reason this is not a... The reason why I haven't already bought this... And by the way, I I liked it. And he, you see here, he sent me a special offer of 30 bucks off. So that's even... You know, he really tried me. I had to think really hard about it. I was like, you know, I really just can't right now. I mean, I could, but... It's, it's got to be perfect for me. And this is what kind of killed it for me. Is it's not a solo piece. It's part of this. You know this bigger production paper. And you know. The price is pretty high. It just. just it's not quite. What I was looking for. Um. Uh, you know, maybe you want that. I know it's a great piece. So we have a Chris Seaman piece, original painting from Tomb of Annihilation. That's a that's a good solid Dungeons and Dragons piece. And who doesn't want some crawling hands? These are my favorite things. I have never played Tomb of Annihilation, but you have to think uh, uh, this looks like it's probably one of the main bad guys, or at least an encounter. Um, it's priced pretty high, I want to say. Yeah, it's only six and a half by twelve. It, you know, Chris Seaman is a very big D and D artist. Offers are encouraged, so sounds like he'd do a deal. Two K is a little on the high side for me. I think I'd probably offer a little less. Oh, I also found a uh, Greg and Tim Hildebrandt painting, Odin's Palace. Well, this has actually been on there a long time, but while I was on here, I just figured, hey, maybe you hadn't seen it. It's not the best picture. I think they could improve their chances of selling this with a with a better picture uh, and probably more of them. I mean, if you're selling imagery, you really you really should take more and better pictures. But I gotta say, you know, I talk, I know I talked last week about uh, Patrick Jones and his color palette. Well, man, the Hildebrands, they made a, this color palette. I don't know. I really, I think I heard them talk about it one time, but they really put together this thing. You you just know a Hildebrand painting when you see it. It's like, it's like they put, they pick the perfect colors for magic, and everything just is so. So them, I, I wonder if, uh, you know, let me look over here for a second. Let me see if I, see if I can find. Let's 
see if we can see um, a better picture of that at least because that's I mean that picture is not good give us a better idea of what we're looking at here yeah okay this one's much better give me just a second And of course, I think I just went to the world of slow loading hell. There we go. Oh, it's actually, uh, it was on Heritage at one time. So, look at this. It's much better. Uh, you see the colors a lot better. And, you know, it's also Norse themed. Odin's palace, you know, the All Father. So that's also in my wheelhouse. I love to own that. And that's really, honestly, for me, for a Hildebrandt, that's a good price. 17 by 24, too. It's not small. I know, um, you know, I've. I mentioned recently that I'm doing a, a commission with Raul Vitale. And I know the Hildebrands were a big influence on him, so maybe that's why I like Raul a lot too. It's amazing how many artists kind of emulate their heroes. You see a lot in their work, um, and and you know that's just passing the torch and lighting the fires as they go. I really like that. Um, let's see. Okay, so we also found, found this Fire Mage Jaina tracing paper. So let's look at that. This is pretty high for tracing paper. I'm not sure what part of the process this is. Um, if you know, let me know. But I believe, I mean, usually when I think tracing paper, it's like they're transferring it. Um, they, they get, they like draw the image, make it, you know, blow it up or whatever, make it, make it a drawing. Then they take the tracing paper and they put it on the, you know, uh, on the canvas and they either like trace off of it or they just, you know, paint over it as part of the canvas. So... Uh, I'm not sure. Obviously, he didn't paint over it, but I mean that's like I said, that's a that's a piece of tracing paper going for you know a, a good bit. I mean that's a that's a enough for a painting from a, a unknown artist, you know, or a young up and comer. But that is a main character, hero character, so. And it's, you know, from a published piece. So, you know, you have a lot going for it. So, Mark posted this. Uh, Mark is a very popular uh, art agent that represents a lot of Magic Gathering artists. Um, but this, uh, he posted this piece. And let's see what he does here. It's currently at $5,000. It's a new Greg Staples piece, The Search for Tomorrow from the upcoming Magic the Gathering set, Time Spiral Remastered. Um, so it's 18 by 3 by 14.4. So it's, I mean, that's actually a pretty big size, too, for Magic. Though I think a lot of them have, a lot of the artists have kind of figured out that they can um, make a lot from the resale of the paintings afterwards. I think a lot, I think some digital artists are, are tr kind of going back to traditional that, that are working magic paintings because of that. I mean, obviously they don't all, but you know, if you can make an extra five, 10, 15,000, why not? It's a really pretty piece. Like the details. So we have 
a drawing plane wide disaster. It's at four hundred twenty five dollars. Original sketch for plane wide disaster from the Plane Chase two thousand twelve Magic Gathering set. Selling on the behalf of Dave Kendall. Let's take a look at it all. And get your brockish griffin or whatever. Yeah, I guess that's a griffin. That's a guy who got a rider. Um, details. So, one idea I've been thinking, I think I'm going to buy or get a Magic Gathering sketch. And I think I'm going to hold uh, a contest where I'm going to give it away. Um, I'm not sure when I'll do this, but if I, if I don't start seeing more people here on the channel during the show, I think I'll, I'll make it real easy to, to I think I'll use that to get a few people over here what do you think about that idea if you think that's a good idea let me know uh, leave me a comment or uh, you know tell me in, in chat um, I'm probably looking at something like a two or three hundred dollar sketch uh, that people would love to have um, I think it'd be fun so that's yeah this brings us here so um this is uh posted by a phantasmal member uh, ryan metzger and it is from a book um let's get the details i'll look here at the art first really want to kind of get in the habit of really looking at the art and then kind of going over the details. So we don't have a lot going up top. And down here we have some really nice stone work. And you have, um, so I know, I know the story is about, a, uh, like the truth sayers where, um, there's kind of like this judge with a magic cloak and the cloak is stolen and, and uh, you know, it probably has some, I'm going to guess, truth powers. I really don't know. I've never read the book. But this looks like a inquisition of sorts here. Nice, dramatic piece by Donato. Uh, you know, Donato's just really one of the best artists out there uh it's quite a following i think this piece is uh i think that says 1998 there so it's um it's an older piece it's 23 years let's see it's, this is it in its frame Nice, like the emblem. All the angles. Drawing the eye, you know, this arm, this arm, the sword. Everything just drawing you into the central figure there. You have your little spy in the behind the curtain here. Donato Giacola, The True Sayer's Apprentice, paper book cover 1999. Um, so the book's 1999, and I guess he did the painting in 98. Oil on paper laid on board. Um, now the estimate is 1500 to 2500. I don't really know uh, what Donato's non Magic Gathering art sells for, but um, that seems low. It goes that low maybe I, I don't know seems like at least on the higher end of that 2500 then I was just a master I mean he's kind of 
And this is just me speaking, but he's kind of like the Norman Rockwell of fantasy paintings right now for me. Uh, he, the subject matter he tends to focus on is, is very classic, and he takes that classic um, focus and and breathes it into every work that he does. So makes it, makes every painting feel like it might have been a hundred, two hundred years old. That's what I feel anyway. So do you have any uh, favorite artists you'd like to see me uh, do a spotlight on? I've really been thinking about doing that too. Like uh, currently my format is I come on two nights a week. I take a look at what's out there, what's for sale, go poke around. I, I have them on particular days just because I think they're good days for that. I've got, I do Tuesdays which every Tuesday Heritage launches a new weekly auction. So that gives me a good base of things to look at. Um, and then we can go find the other things that are sprinkled out there. Um, I do it on Fridays because you often have weekend galleries. Uh, you know, that actually reminds me there is something else going on. Let me, let me pull that up. I think uh, Penumbra is having a small works show. And they typically have art that is kind of phantasmal, phantasmal-ish, if, if I can say that. Let's see. Okay, I'll need to be a little guarded in case there's some riskier art on here. Yeah, so there's lots of little works. I will pull them up. Give me one second. I think I'll just go with a few... Uh, yes, of course. I almost bought this one. I'm going to start with it. I really loved it. I, I, I could have bought it. I obviously got sidetracked. Look at that. Crimina Chipilova, Death and the Maiden. So cool. I like that skeletal hand. The mood of the piece is great. Inspired by the common Renaissance art motif of death and the maiden, it depicts a young woman seized by the personification of death expressed by a skeletal hand that I chose to show only partially. Quite a great piece. Yeah, I, 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 I actually had this in my basket, to be, believe it or not. I knew it was going to sell. I should have jumped on that. My bad. Can't buy them all though. I could instantly vaporize like 20 grand. Um, let's take a look at something else. Trying to find pieces that have that fantasy element. I've got a good mix.
see about this piece. Quiet, sister, my sister. The, guy, the dichotomy of love, love that unites us and love that binds us. It's the same love with the same face. Like the message, I really don't know that I'd classify this as fantasy art, but it, it's, I mean, they don't, their faces look quite different. And I like the mood. Um. These are all small works. You can get there at penumbraboutique.com. Penumbra. Pretty cool piece. Let's look at this one. Uh, this is a, a shadow box, but he's pretty creepy. Claudia Six. From today on, this little creature will have to live in a little box with its own shadows, ghosts, and dreams. Just like all of us. Well, I live in a house without windows. <laughs> it really is a box, isn't it? anyway kind of going back to what I was saying um, I think that I would like to start getting into doing a uh, spotlight show where I actually pick an artist maybe maybe two and uh, go and see what's out there what what we can find that might be available as well as just look at their history of work what are their more iconic paintings and maybe learn a little bit about their history if you think that'd be a good idea uh, let me know just uh, be sure to pop in a comment or you can throw something in chat be happy to look all right so that's old we looked at uh, let's see, is there any more So while we're on a Scott Murphy kick, I will just kind of bring up his website. He's got a lot of stuff over here for sale. Now Scott has been doing um, a lot of magic work lately, as well as he's done a lot of D&D work. Um, I really love this guy. I actually ran an adventure and based a post-apocalyptic wizard off of this guy. I don't know the story of this card. Like I said, I don't actively play Magic anymore. Um, so this, I don't know if there is any story, but I had a, I made a wizard and modeled him after this, and he was kind of like this post-apocalyptic desert dealer that went from town to town and was pretty notorious. Um, had fun with that idea. It was a great inspiration for my, my game. I really like this drawing for that reason. We have Setessian training drawing, five hundred dollars. That's kind of the, the going price if you just flat out buy a drawing for Magic. I mean, you see plenty that are like two thousand, but feel like uh, if you watch an auction, it'll usually go for a drawing will usually go for like two to eight hundred bucks. Usually two fifty to like uh, five or six hundred. It's typical. So just to come out here, no haggle. I like the piece. I'm gonna buy it. That's a pretty good price. Four fifty for this one. Bane Whip Punisher. She does not like them not working hard enough. That's for sure. Sergeant at Arms. Four hundred and fifty bucks.
call the cavalry. These are big too. Look, that's 12 by 16. Well, the image is, it's even bigger than that. It's 14 by 18. Oh, you know, before I forget, which I already did, obviously, I wanted to show you the, the Lara Dan piece I got. So, this is a vampiric piece. Uh, it's called Come to Me. Now, I liked, I liked the spider webs under the chin. I thought that was a great design. And you, if you look carefully, you can just see the the white scroll work. Like I said, she always does that. This piece is on wood. It came ready to hang. Um, it was really affordable. I think I paid like 250 for this or something like that uh, in the show. Anyway, completely love this piece. Uh, my only my only problem I have with it is that when I bought this piece and I put it next to um, a piece of my, my uh, death card for me and Daniel's collection, I realized that I, I had a thing for really pale white uh, vampiric dead girls because <laughs> they were both that way. So I try to put it on a different side, but it just always gravitates right over or right next to it. <laughs> anyway, that's very beautiful, don't you think? I mean, she, like I said, she has another show coming up, a vampire-based show, solo show. Hoping I can find something in that I really like. Uh, I have a, just a short list of like five or six artists that I I keep kind of wanting to get another piece from or get a first piece up from. But the problem I've had uh, the last year and this year is that I've, I've kind of decided to bite the bullet and do a bunch of big commissions that I've always wanted to do, you know. And so the budget for the little one-offs has gotten smaller. So maybe maybe after this year things will open back up and I can uh, regularly start to add things. But I'm also I'm trying to look at uh, this a little more from the investing side too. So I'm, I am trying to get published art a little bit more than I have been. Um, Maybe that's just the I don't own a magic painting in me speaking right now, but I'm going to buy a magic painting pretty soon. Um, my goal is to do it when this Forgotten Realm set comes out because, you know, I feel like there's going to be some art in there that's going to blow me away. It's going to be subject matter I know very well um, that means something to me, and it'll be by artists I love. And, it'll, you know, I can kind of justify that extra cost to get my first magic painting. Now, I don't know if I'll do many more past that, but I kind of have started thinking that I might I might just focus a little more on published works than I have in the past. Because I just, right now, I just, I buy whatever I love. And that tends to be, um, you know, affordable too, really. I mean, that path is, is a great path to take. I can probably, oh, well, there's no probably to it. I can buy four or five normal paintings for the cost of a magic card. So it is hard to to do that. But with that being said, it also is it's easy to sell. They're very liquid. Like if you if you needed to sell one or want to, you know, you you have an opportunity to get a Grail piece and you need to sell, well. It's kind of hard to do with non-published pieces because those pieces may or may not have someone interested in them. They may also not may also not be able to get offers that are um, equal to what you put in them. But with magic card art and really any published art, you've got a lot better chance that there's someone out there that really wants that piece and will pay what it's worth right then and there. So, here's a planetar. K 
Cavern of Lizards. That's definitely some D&D from Ghost of Salt Marsh. Danger at Dunwater. So this is a, you know, a kind of a recent remake of the classic uh, modules. I really like this one a lot. I it's on my short list. I, I I'm very close. Really, the only reason I don't own this piece right now already uh, is that I am doing some big commissions, and that magic card purchase is looming. Like, so, you know, am I going to miss this twelve hundred dollars at the end of the year when, when you know, the magic card paintings hit and. I'm, I might need it. So that, that's really what I'm agonizing with. Lots of great pieces. You know, here's the drawing to the painting we looked at earlier. That's nice too. That's a great price. That's a really good price, this man. Look at that one. I mean, usually you're going to get charged at least 200 bucks for a drawing like that. Oh, look at this. Man, I like that. Fofford and the Gray Mauser. Bound to the bleak shore. Tale of Alfred and the Gray Mauser, written by Fritz Lieber. Have you ever read those books? I have read a couple. Um, his writing style was very different, though. Like, I know it was cool, but it wasn't necessarily my thing. But I, I had a lot of experience also playing these guys in Dungeons and Dragons as characters. So a good iconic fantasy pair. It's a great, great painting. So we have a bunch of uh, tarot cards. That's a big sword. Huh. Let's see. Here we covered everything. Yeah, we were there last week. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so there's some other. So Ryan Pankos, current bid $4,500. Safi Eric's daughter. Daughter. <laughs> That's funny how names were formed by things like that. Self posing. Oh, look at that. That's cool work. Catacomb Dragon, is that sold? Yeah, that's sold. Oh, I didn't see this one yet. So, some new hotness from Mark Zug. Info to come. Cloud Sprite Token. Actually, I think I did see this. Yeah, I liked it. I didn't take a great look at it, though. What do you think about that one? Skin work is cool. That whole design right there is interesting. The way it sinks under the water. The wings. Okay, this is, looks like a big mana ape. Simeon Spirit Guy by Lucas Graciano. 14 by 18 on oil. Ooh, look at that. That's one mighty ape. 
Oops, you guys are seeing a preview over there. That was not supposed to be shown. I'll show you next time. Currently $11,000. Wow. It's pretty high. Especially for a non dragon. Someone's been watching a little too much King Kong. I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of pumped about King Kong versus Godzilla. As bad as the human parts of the story were in the last Godzilla, they got the monster parts right. The monsters were really cool. It was the best special effects that scene. And I'm not ashamed to say that I, I, I watched the movie more than once because of the monsters. But it was hard. The human story was bad. I'm hoping they improve on that because they had some good actors. They just they didn't deliver there. Just just my opinion. We already looked at the ash model. I don't know what that is. We looked at that. I'm just showing these off. A couple of slivers for you old schoolers. Very popular magic beastie. It's a new one from Carl Critchko, Critchlow, Info to Come. Ooh, an old school cosmic horror. Is that the original? It is. So, so this is a old uh, Legends card, like a seven seven baddie. I forget his thing. It's been too long. Spark Spray by Pete Venters. 2,000 plus shipping. It's not an auction. Looks like it's just an offer to buy. A couple PMs came in. This is what I mean about magic art being liquid. Look, I mean, he's got action. This is just any old random card. There's no, I don't think there's anything overly special about it in terms of... of uh, Value. I mean, it does have a goblin. Everyone knows how much Will Larson likes goblins. But, I don't know. You just, you're not, if you, if you have, an, if you're having a downtime and you need to move something, or if you, um, you know, I mean, this time with COVID and everything, you know, anyone can have a, have a downturn and need, need the funds. Or if you just, like I said, you see a chance to get one, you something you really want. It's nice to have parts in your uh, portfolio that are very liquid. So this piece looks tremendous. I don't think he's selling it yet, but it's kind of the, it's the same situation as that game, uh, that video game piece we looked at earlier. But look at this. All right, we got a bit of a fire dragon suggestion here. He's on the rocks calling the lava. There's a blood moon behind him, swirling magic crescent, glowing red moon. Man, this piece is just flat out badass, to be quite honest. This might be one of my favorite pieces I've seen uh, Milovage do. Look at that. And he posted a picture I saw earlier too of him sitting down. This is a very large piece. What's it? What's the size on it? Twenty-two point eight times thirty-one and a half inches. It's big. Let's see if we can. Here. Let's see if he has more pictures in here. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. I mean, damn, right? I mean, that's that's big and cool. Love to own that. Magus of the Moon. And let's see if 
poke around a couple more of the usual joints. Somebody got a demonic tutor? That Phyrexian Arena something. Great, and he looks like he's got some cool pieces. Mobius. So the discussion group's a lot lo more loose knit, and you'll often see threads like this where, you know, let's do a, a, a free a Friday sales post, anything goes, and you'll you'll be able to go through and see a lot of pieces in here why don't we go through these really quick I'm not sure that I've done that uh, in one of my other videos so why not take a look and then we'll call it a night um, got a Ian Miller 3000 shipped Jim Nelson 3500 shipped or best offer An unused painting for unglued by Scott Fisher, 1500 shipped. So that's a pretty good price. Sold, of course, yes, sold. Oh, look at this. Man, this looks familiar. A D&D supplement art. Going to pull this off to the side for a minute and see if I can. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, that reminds me of Clyde Caldwell, but I don't think it is. What is this marking here? Is even a signature it looks like it might have been it's like an RK post maybe I don't know I'll be researching this piece tonight it's very cool that's a good price I don't know who it is though it's sold Oh, that's a Dave Leary. So just so you guys know, Dave Leary is one of the artists that was kind enough to, when I was first starting out the Phantasmal channel to let me use one of his paintings as, as my billboard. Uh, and I have all long wanted to get into the Dave Leary Club because he um, he just he takes a long time to paint. And I just don't think he puts out a lot of images anymore. And, uh, you know, he's got a full-time job on top of being a world-class artist. Um, so I wanted to join the Dave Leary Club for a while. I've been looking for a piece that I liked. And I will be having a, a uh, unboxing video before too long because I just joined the Dave Leary Club. So kind of pumped about that. Um, it is my birthday coming up soon, and it was a little happy for myself. Not that painting, by the way. It's a different painting. Now, man, if I had the money to just throw at something, for, I, I, I want to. I like liches. I just even the wild liches. Of course, I like wild art too. I'm into the Hearthstone and everything, but uh, I'd love to have that. It's cool. I do think the one, I believe Will, Will Larson won an auction for one of these pieces that was better, had 
and striking down in this big icy blast in the ground. Molar repaint. Unused Ice Age painting. Only a only thousand dollars. Seems like that being so old, even though it wasn't used, seemed like it'd be worth more than that, but only time will tell. Oh, so I like Justin Gerard's work. Chaos Chimera. That's really great. 300 shipped. I have a I have a, a, a this drawing for his painting uh, called Angry Tweets. It's a big you know, int treant, however you want to say it. Um, walking. He's got birds all in his branches aka hair. It's pretty cute. I picked that up at Dragon Con uh, directly from him a couple of years ago. Rings piece, eight by eight. Cassandra Webster, three hundred shipped. RK Post, five hundred shipped. Doug Shaffy, yes, 500 is the valuation he put on it. Ley Line of Lightning, $2,000. See, this is what I was saying. Like, I mean, this is great. It's published. I mean, it's a great piece of art. It's just not personally that appealing to me. It's a great, you know, it's a good price for a magic painting, but, you know, when I can spend five or six hundred dollars, you know, fifteen hundred even, on a piece I really, really love, it just kind of trumps that. But I'm hoping I can get the right combo. You see a lot of, you see a lot of these magic paintings go for ten and fifteen thousand. I'm, you know, really hoping I can get something that I like, at, you know, a better, a much better price. We'll see. War Eagle by Aaron Miller, 8x10 oils on panel. DG token from his collection. That's cool. 7x10 by, by Stephanie Law. Pencil drawing, $200. Byzantium 8x10, Michael C. Hayes, $900. Sold. Yeah, Arzu, titled Judith in Holoferns. I don't know that. So I like this piece. It does actually kind of fit my um, collection. I mean, you know, I talked to Brian about it once. It's just, I think I just currently have higher priorities. I do like it. Pretty good deal for 750. Serene Sunset by David Martin from Onslaught, 4200. That's a cool piece. It doesn't look like it's overly large or anything, but pictures can be deceiving. Love that little glow. A lot of, a lot of paintings. You know, the, the the for me, it's those little effects like that that really make them pop. This is great, David Hopper. He is a great upcoming artist. I uh, he just showed, there was a piece that I saw recently that he did. It was like he had a ship in one version. It was an older. He had done this painting for a client. And then, you know, I think because of COVID and things, 
that client didn't go to publish right away and there was like a big year there and in that year David skills just they grew so tremendously that he was felt inspired to take another stab at the painting convinced the artist to do it and uh and, and produced a great image um let me see if I let me just see if I can find that since I bothered to tell you the story. See if I can find that real quick because it's pretty dramatic the difference. Let's see. Yeah, so I just saw the painting, but I want the a side by side comparison painting really quick. Give me a, a minute. I won't bore you too bad with it. Okay, I don't see it, so I'll just show you I'll show you the better painting. So he came back and he produced a really quite a striking painting. Look at that. So it's very dynamic. Get the sea swells and the lightning, skies even rolling. For two two kings games, lace adventure titled Blood Rage coming in 2022. That's really cool. Okay, looks like this is the longest show I've done yet. Um, so I'll go ahead and call it for the night. That was a great piece to end the night on. Uh, again, if you are watching this and you like it, please remember to give it a like. Uh, if, you, if it's your first time here, subscribe. I'm going to continuously work to make this channel a great place to come to. I, I really can't stress enough that you know I want to build this into a chat community where it's not just me just kind of blindly talking about everything but that where we can kind of come together and, and, and really uh, learn from each other and discover different artists with each other. So those are my hopes. If you'll uh, like, subscribe, comment, um, I'll be happy. Thank you. We'll see you uh, again soon, uh, next Tuesday.